the expanding table has been my most successful project to date in terms of views and discussion and the plans, of course, which is hugely appreciated because it also took the most work. We had about 450 hours into this project, and by the time I got to the end of it, I had just run out of enthusiasm for, for niceties. As you can see with things like the, the ugly legs, of course, and the lack of skirt, I just wanted to get it working, and once I worked out all the interesting, difficult bits, uh, that was it for that version. But it's a little bit later now, it's been about a year since the last uh, revision, and I kind of like to come back to it and make some improvements. This is just a protective cover that we put on here because we've been using it as a regular table. Uh, underneath you can see it, it looks fine. So there's three main areas that I'm planning to focus on with these improvements, and this is going to be more than one week that we're going to work on it. They're going to be the skirt. That's probably the most requested one. We're going to do some sort of skirt system. I'd like to change the way that the star works underneath. The same sort of strategy, but a little bit different setup to make it more reliable for long-term use. And I'd also like to look into increasing the stiffness on the lifting layer, because I think that'll help with a, a few things. So the operation is going to stay the same. We're not redoing the philosophy or anything, but little things. And the results of this will, of course, be in an update to the plans, which will get sent out to everybody who's already purchased it. So I'm excited to do this. Let's get started. No table video is complete without at least a few spins, though. Moving the table brought to mind another recurring question, which is how much it weighs. I would made an estimate before of about 200 pounds, but since we had it out here we decided to go ahead and weigh it. We brought it up on one side so the heights would be equal, and then put our scale underneath. It has to zero under its own weight, so we have it on a sheet here, so it can do that. Then we slide it underneath, and we get about, or just about exactly 100 pounds on this side and then we took it around the other side and got 108. So that comes in pretty close to my 200 pound estimate. We'll call it 210, which is 95 kilos. And since they weren't equal and the table seems pretty symmetrical, I checked the levelness of the floor just to be sure. It's pretty level. It does pitch towards the drain a little bit, of course, but uh, it shouldn't really affect this weight. So who knows? I thought a quick clip of the actual design process might be illuminating because this is it. It's me sitting on a milk crate with a tape measure and a speed square, just thinking about the problem and trying to figure out how to solve it. There's really no magic to it. Uh, there's really no, there's no computers involved here. Computers are great. I love computers, but they're good for certain things. For designing machines, I think they're great for working out proportions, making sure that when you rotate something, it'll clear something else, or just checking that things look correct. But when it comes to actually solving the problem, I have not found a way to get around just sitting there thinking about it and sometimes doing the thinking while you're walking around or other situations like that if it's really a difficult problem. Once you've got your arms around it, you just have to mull it over. The skirt issue is an interesting one because there are two main approaches. You can either have the skirt be fixed more or less to the frame and stay where it is, or you can have a skirt which is in multiple sections with one for each top piece. The problem with the top one is that when you expand the table, we create space between these ones, so the part that comes up in the center needs to have its own piece. And we'll show in a second why that's a problem, but the problem with having the fixed one in the current setup is that the support for these slides, like this one, extends out underneath, and that's going to run into any any skirt that would be on the frame. The issue with the attached skirt design is not in this main part of the panel. It's in the area where it overlaps with the ones that rise up. And the problem is that this one is still extending out while it's underneath the main piece. And if there was a skirt that was hanging down here, and this one had a skirt that was hanging down, they would come out and bump into each other and it wouldn't work. Now, one way to fix that, or maybe the obvious way, is to say, make this come out later. I'm not sure what you'd call that. I'll call it variable timing on the table, because it sounds cool, like an auto term. But uh, 
what it would probably entail is shifting the position of the arm, which is underneath, that makes it come out. And you'd have to change the length and then change this. It could potentially impact some other things. I haven't thought it through 100%, but it doesn't feel that promising right now. Now that we've ruled out more or less the multi-piece design, let's look at the single-piece design. And the problem with that is that we're going to have to trim down the slides underneath these pieces, particularly the large main ones, which is going to reduce our stiffness in this direction. That seems like a, a downside, but we get something for it, which is that we have a continuous ring underneath the entire piece. That's a pretty good benefit, especially on stiffness and strength. It also, in the expanded position, helps give it some continuity on the alignment between not just these, but the ones that are in between them. So I feel like that's a pretty good trade-off. And the other good thing with that is that I think I can accomplish it by simply trimming up the current slides and changing uh, the spacer in between, which also means that people who previously bought the plans or have a table in progress won't have to have a complete overhaul. It works out for both of us. I don't want to have to completely overhaul this, so they benefit too. Now this ring that we're talking about needs to be fairly big. It needs to be a little over four feet in diameter here, and it also needs to be about five and a half inches deep. I'm budgeting right now for about three quarters of an inch thick. And there are a few ways to make these type of rings. The first one that comes to mind is you make a form and then you do bent lamination around it. Bent lamination has some benefits. It's pretty efficient on the material if you buy thin material but you do have the springback factor and my original thought was that this being a little over four feet times pi 12 we can make two halves with eight foot strips and then only have two joints but the problem with two joints is that then it's not that i guess it is technically symmetrical but it's not that symmetrical in both ways and you're not going to have a perfect moment connection between those pieces if there is any springback I need this ring to be very accurate. I need to be able to spin it to do things underneath and have pieces remain right in their place. So I'm kind of right now leaning towards building up a piece, which is pretty close, and then machining it down to what we want, which you can probably tell is what I'm excited about because then we get to build a fancy jig. The ironic thing about the bend lamination idea is that I happen to have a lot of eighth inch plywood. I have a file here. 13 and some change, so that's 80, 24, 100, call it 110 sheets of 18 by 24 inch, pl eighth inch plywood. But uh, much like the Monty Python joke, it's too small to be useful. The reason we have so much eighth inch plywood is for our ill-fated maps project, which will get its own video in the future to explain how that went down. And this is the last one here that we just sold, but we thought we were going to make a lot of them, so we picked up $400 worth of that plywood and cut it all into little rectangles. So it's just sitting there waiting for a project. We're looking at the edge of the table here and when we come down we can see on this edge that it's kind of rough because I just cut it out with a jigsaw. And part of my plan here for this ring that we're going to build is to have something like this which is going to ride and go up and down probably a ramp in this area. But obviously it's not, there's no room here for it, and I can't trim this away because of parts here and there. So we're going to need to extend out this piece uh, by gluing on pieces there. And the first thing we need to do is make it rounder and get rid of these sort of wobbles. That way we can glue an extension piece on here and it'll fit well. It takes a little time to get the table apart, but we're down to the support level here. You can see the lower level back there, the other pieces in that area. And we went ahead and built ourselves a pretty nice trammel here. There's a pin that drops in the center. This plate is just strictly for the trammel and it adjusts in and out. We put a bit of time into this, but I needed it to be stiff so that it's very circular. And we're gonna get double or triple duty out of it because we're gonna be able to use it for the segments also. We'll just crank it out by roughly an inch and a half plus the blade, the uh, bit diameter. And the reason, of course, that we're doing this is we need to increase this, uh, increase the diameter of this out about an inch and a half. And it's a little wobbly because I cut it with a jigsaw. It didn't matter before, but now I want to have a good glue line because we're going to have some load on that.
One nice thing about this table is that I'd wax the surface to reduce friction. So between that, a sharp bit, and a nice jig setup, it was pretty easy to spin this around. Fortunately for us, I had installed an outlet directly above the center of the garage, and the cord was the perfect length on this router. The first pass wasn't quite deep enough, so we just bumped it in a little bit and went around for another lap. This is why I love great tools and great jigs, because they make easy things easy. I like to do difficult things, but only if it's warranted. If it should be simple, then I don't want to put that much effort into it. That's it for this week, unfortunately. We had a few other projects we had to work on, a bookcase and some other things. We've also been making some capital expenditures on insulation in the ceiling and other places because it'd be kind of nice to ditch the winter coat later on. But uh, we committed to the table project here, made a little sawdust, and we've got a lot more planned, so we'll be back next week with more action. Thank you.